And were some directors more interested in what, what you were doing than others? Yes, some, some directors were quite picky about the clothes, but some of them, they were only concerned with the action. I mean, much later on, people like Raoul Walsh, all he wanted to care about was the cowboys in the background. He didn't care what trouble you'd gone to with Jane Mansfield's clothes. <laughs> So throughout the 1950s, <clears throat> excuse me, you expanded your repertoire to take in different types of costume, and you did quite a lot of war films, so you did a lot of uniforms. How do you go about researching that kind of costume? Uh, when, when you do a war film afterwards, people say, oh, you didn't have much to do, did you? But believe me, um, there was a lot of work and research and getting it right. And something like Alan Ladd in the Red Berry, I mean, there was a tremendous amount of paratroopers uniform. And I went to Aldershot and then went to museums and um, I hope did get it right. But there'd always be somebody who'd write and tell you that something was wrong. And way forward to the very last thing I did, which was a perfect hero with Nigel Havers. And we had letters from some wing commanders saying that the May West jackets were used um, either they were yellow when they shouldn't have been, or um, we'd got it wrong. <laughs> so there's always somebody out there who knows. And with period costumes, one normally thinks of crinolines and Victoria, but of course you worked in all kinds of different periods. Um, you mentioned Raoul Walsh, and he directed Sheriff Fractured Jaw, which was, you had to design a Wild West sort of uh, costume. Cowboys and Indians. <laughs> yeah. And you worked with Jane Mansfield on, on that one. It must have been amazing to design a costume like that for her. Well, it was quite a figure, that, I must say. And she came to a fitting one day in her mink coat with only underclothes underneath. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. But actually, she was quite fun. But at the time, of course, this bust was, was really news. But actually, while we were on location, there was a, a message from one of the producers in London could one do something about not having quite so much bust? <laughs> but in, I'm sorry, Jay, there was a, a crowd scene in Sheriff of Fractured Jaw with these girls in a sort of bar salon, and they had reasonably low cut dresses. And Jane said to me, Oh, I think those dresses are too low. I think you should cover them up so that hers was by far the lowest. <laughs> but she was okay. And where was that one tour? Where were the locations for that? It was in Spain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Typical place. Yes. The right sort of mountains and things to look like. Kind of. And the same year you worked for Joseph Losey on the film The Gypsy and the Gentleman. I gather you had a few problems with the costumes for that one. With the star. Oh yes, M Melina McQuarrie, because the Gypsy and Gentleman, the period was sort of Regency with high waists, and Melina took a look at the sketches and said, oh, I'm not going to wear that, I, I can't wear high waist, I want to have a waist. Um, so <laughs> we had to kind of work around that, and some of her dresses I thought looked a little bit like, um, it was in the late 50s, wasn't it? Yeah, um, kind of modern evening dresses. <laughs> But it was okay. I mean, she, she was quite fun, but suddenly to be confronted with someone saying, I can't wear that and I won't wear that, was um, for the moment quite difficult. Uh, you did another film called The Seekers, which was again a period film but set in New Zealand with Maoris in it. How did you research what Maoris wore in the turn of the century? Well, I did, did a lot of my research in the British Museum here and found out a lot about this what people commonly call grass skirts, they're not, they're called pew-pews, and they're made of flax. But we had to recreate these, and they were actually made out of drinking straws strung together and then painted with that sort of Maori pattern. And it worked tremendously well. But the other problem was um, using Maori crowd, real ones, as we did, sometimes with their own pew-pews. But today, I mean, then, I'm talking of um, 1952 uh, or three or something, yeah. um, they used to wear, um, the men wore sort of boxer shorts under them, and they couldn't understand that you couldn't have that kind of thing. We had quite a problem with terrible jock straps <laughs> and dyeing them fresh colour. I mean, you know, that sort of thing. No one would think a costume designer has that kind of problem, would you? And this was all out in Zealand on location. <laughs>